I was going to have a look at pub MLST and use it to look at the presence of a gene in Neisseria. I've opened up pub MST website addresses here. Then if I go on to organisms and select Neisseria, I specifically wanted to have a look in Neisseria subflava. If I go on isolate collection and search database, now in this field here where it says isolate provenance fields, if I select species and then type in the species here, display all records. Here I've got a list of all of the Neisseria subflava isolates on the Hubble MST database. I can actually export this data. So at the bottom of the page it says here export data set. So I'm just going to get this information out of the web page. Once I've done that, I select ID, isolates. You can also select any of the fields that you see down here. So I'm going to have isolate ID, the country of isolation, as well as, say for example, if it's been associated with a disease, you know Neisseria subflava is a commensal. And I hit submit. Here you can actually export that information as a text file, but I'm going to take it out as Excel. So I press on Excel. If I open this file now, what I can see here is my isolate ID. I've got the isolate name as well, the country where it's been isolated from. And also the information that I asked about whether it was associated with disease. So if you can have a look down the page, you'll see in total on this database, there's 79 isolates. So just going back, I'll bring up the initial cluster that I was looking at. So I did a RAST annotation of a genome and I identified within a cluster of hypothetical genes a transcriptional accessory protein. So that's this one here. So this is what I'm interested in looking at and seeing how it's different across other Neisseria subflava. So looking for the presence where there's differences in maybe the sequence and how they cluster. The RAST annotation is good and I can pull out the sequence of this from here. So the predicted gene sequence for this accessory protein. If I go into Hubble MST database, I'm interested to see what Hubble MST predicts this particular gene to be. If you go on to the Neisseria species part of the database, if you go on to typing and then search or query a sequence and you want a single sequence, here you can paste that gene sequence and press submit. And if you go down the page, it's predicted the closest match to be to this here. So this is the identifying match here. That's the gene in Pablo MSTs. What I did was I pasted that information in there just so I wouldn't forget. Now I want to see if it's present in other Neisseria subflava. So again, if you go onto the Neisseria species database, go on isolate collection, again search database and select species. So like Neisseria subflava, again, display all records. Depending on what organism you're looking at, there'll be various amounts of information in here. Thankfully, there's, like I said, around 79 isolates here for subflava, but for the pathogens and other organisms, you might find there's thousands. At the bottom of the page here, you'll see there's many different tools that you can actually use with this data. Firstly, I'm going to have a look at something called gene presence. So if you click on gene presence, in here you can see it's selected the isolates here. So the Neisseria isolates. And again, I now know, or I've got an idea of what this is. So this identifier here, it's NEIS0059. And the database, if you go on where it says loci and select from there, that's that one there. What this is doing is just going to look for the presence of this gene in these isolates. It's not particularly necessary to change any of these at this point, although you can you want to limit the, the range or the identity that you're searching for this particular gene in the isolates, but this, this is fine. And then select submit. At the bottom of the page, you'll see there's several output formats here. You can actually look at this in, in table form and it will tell you that particular locus is absent in 23 genomes, present in 56, and that's out of a total of 79. So firstly, we're just going to look at the presence. Absence I'll look at in a minute. Go back on here. Similarly, the heat map will just produce an image of whether this is present or absent using a visual aid. So looking at the output of the gene presence tool, you can see it's arranged this information, or rather the presence or absence is either a zero for absence or one for presence. 
So if you arrange the data for that, you sort by column B from smallest to largest, you'll see these isolates here are the ones absent and then below are present. Now the information is a bit too basic, it just gives up the output as a, a zero or a one. You can actually get some more detailed information on this. If you go back onto Niceria Isolates Search Database, if you bring up your list of all Niceria of species, Niceria subflava, and as we said before, display all. So if we export this list, so export data set, as we said before, these are all of the isolates, so all 79 isolates should be in here. You can select any fields that you want to include in this export. So we did this initially, we'll just have another look now. So here's the information. And now you've got a list where you can actually, if you need to, you can copy these isolate IDs. Okay, so I'll just quickly uh, do that. Now another way to get to the BLAST tool, you go on Niceria Species again. Isolate collection. On this side here, you can see there's some plugin tools that you can use. Whereas you can bring up a list of all of your isolates and then blast from there. Additionally, you go into the analysis plugins. If you go down the page, so there's the launch blast tool. If I hit that. Now I have my Excel sheet for all of my isolates or my serious subflava. You can copy this and paste it into here, where it says isolates. So that's all 79 isolates. Now I don't think this gene is present in all of them, but you can then copy your sequence and paste it into here. And then it asks you what you want to include in your output or the results. I'm going to include country, say for example, and whether it's associated with a disease. If you press submit. So the output looks like this. You see it's done the BLAST search for that sequence. While it does have a database ID, I've done it by sequence here. And you can see for all of the isolates where this has been identified, various bits of information in here. So you've got the isolates, the country, whether it's associated with disease, the percent identity as well. So anyway, going down the list, you look at the bottom, you've got some information that you can take out from here. So you can select table, faster, or faster with flanking sequences. Firstly, I'll take the Excel file. I open that. This is the BLAST output. So you can see here, isolate ID, percent identity, and so on. Looking down the list, we're expecting there to be 59 isolates as predicted by the gene presence tool. So this sort of confirms the results of that. I'm gonna just condense the information into one workbook. So if I take this and then put it into where I've got all of my isolates here. So I've just put it into parts of the spreadsheet there. So this is all of my subflava here, and these are the isolate with only this gene in. The next thing I'll do is I'll take out the faster sequences. So if I paste that in there, these are now all of the gene sequences for that particular gene, and it's alleles in all of the Neisseria subflava isolates. So I'm going to save that now. Following the BLAST search and finding that the gene wasn't present according to the database in all of the isolates, I'm just going to check what that means because I was expecting it to be in all subflava. So if I go to my list of subflava, at this end here you have IDs, whereas if you check with the only positive isolates, there are IDs that don't appear to have the gene. So here, the first positive one is this ID number here. So looking down here, you can see that will be here. According to this search, these isolates here don't have the gene. I'm going to just take one of these first isolate IDs, say for example, and if I go back onto the database, if I have a look at my serious species again, isolate collection, search the database, I can search that particular isolate. There it is here. Then if I want to export the contigs, I can check if there's information in there, sequencing information. But once I press submit, you can see actually this ID here doesn't appear to have any sequencing information with it. So there's no nucleotide file present for some reason. So it's worth checking the fact that the last search hasn't identified gene in these isolates. It might be because the information isn't there or during sequencing wasn't able to actually sequence that part of the genome.
So I'm just going to move on and have a quick look at these nucleotide genus sequences here and see how they compare to one another. I've got a program that I'm going to use called Eugene, and this will produce alignments of the sequences. And also you can do some sort of analysis by producing a gene tree. If I look at where I saved that file to, so gene in subflava, this is all 58 gene sequences across the Neisseria subflava isolates in the PubLMST database. First thing, open up Eugene, go on Tools, Multiple Sequence Alignment. They've got various alignment options depending on which one you want to use. I'm going to align with Muscle. Locate your file with the sequences in, so I called it Gene in Sub, just to make it easy and then locate an output file as well. I'm going to leave that on the desktop, call it something simple for now, save. So for this information here, you can do a number of different iterations for the alignments. I'm going to leave this at the default setting for now. Press align. When the alignment's complete, you get a quite nice output here. Along the left hand side, you'll see the identifying information. So you've got your isolate ID, your alternate ID, the country of origin, and whether it's associated or been associated with a disease down here as well. It's good because it highlights the nucleotides in here with different color. So visually you can see differences here. You want to change the color along this far right hand side here. You've got a menu with various options. You can search particular patterns of sequence in here. You can also change the color as well. So at the moment it's on this Eugene color scheme. But if you wanted to say percentage identity color, We'll change it to this format here. So for example, depends on what you're interested in looking at. So you can have it in grey as well. But moving on from that, you can actually produce a tree from this. If you look at the top, there's an option here. It says build tree. So if you build a tree, now various options here, the distance matrix, I'm going to leave that as the default. I'm going to use the neighbor joining method, which is quite commonly used. Bootstrapping and consensus tree, I'm going to enable bootstrapping and I'm going to do 100 replicas. And then if I press build, down here there's a status bar, it will tell you how far through the job's going. Depending on the number of sequences and how long they are, this can take a little bit of time. Once the tree is completed, you'll see it appear in this window here. And just scroll down and have a look. This is actually an unrooted tree, but you can add in sequences that are from a species more distantly related. So you've got your isolate ID as well as geographical origin and whether it's been associated with a disease or not. So there's some things that you can do here. You can change the font to make it easier to see. So if you go and show font settings along this side and select the color, select that to make it slightly more defined. You can also change the size of the font as well or whether it's bold or not. You can select the nodes as well. So if you select on here, so for example, and then you go on here, spot sweeping, so you can swap the nodes and you can tidy your image up. It shouldn't affect any of the information here on uh, the actual distances. So again, this one, if I swap that one, you'll see then that the range, the clusters a bit more neatly. So just have a look down. This will just help identify relationships between the sequences themselves, but then you can always go on and do further analysis as to why they're different, say for example or whether any of these actually occur within a specific set of ice that's from particular geographical origin, or whether specific sequences are associated with the ice that's associated with the disease. So that will just help inform further analysis. You need to export this image if you go onto this tab here. Export tree image. You can actually do it as a screen capture, or you can export in another format. Then you can open that up and format it if you wanted to say put it into a presentation. And that's just a quick run through of how to extract sequences from PubMST, identify their presence in different isolates, get the sequences and then import, align them in Eugene and then produce a tree based on that alignment.